we've just been flagged down of an individual over by Jack in the Box holding a sign up that has profanities on it. We'll be in route to check it out. 1040, you advise the sign has profanities on it? Yeah, the sign, the sign that the gentleman's holding up has an iPhone that's attached to it, and it's got very large letters, different profanities. Hey, everybody, it's James Freeman. Hey guys, today I'm bringing you the story of Winston Knowles, also known as Otto the Watchdog on YouTube, and a handful of individuals who are employed by an organization called the Royce City Police Department. I want to stress that the people who have done the things that have been done to Otto the Watchdog are real people. They use the name Royce City Police Department to make it seem as if some fictional entity is doing these things to human beings. I want to make it perfectly clear that real human beings are doing these horrible things to real human beings. It is customary before doing something horrible to other human beings to try to dehumanize those human beings first because it makes it less painful and feel less wrong to do things to these human beings that we know we shouldn't do to them. Since most people are beginning to catch on to this trick, we've kind of flipped it a little bit. Now, instead of pretending that the person being attacked isn't human, we pretend that the attacker is more than human, superior to humans. We pretend that the attacker can rightfully do things to other human beings that no human being can do to other human beings. These individuals that work for the Roy City Police Department and other police departments all around the world are convinced that they are not human because they are allowed to do things to people while they are in the official capacity of this magical entity that they cannot do as regular humans. It is literally dehumanization reversed to achieve the same goals. The individuals who attacked Winston Otto Knowles in the first incident are Michael Burke, Jay Clark, and Keith Short. Where's Johnny with the other one? Should be right over here. Thank you. Bye. Yes. Some guy holding up a sign that says shit is fucked up and stuff or something. <laughs> Still an awful. <laughs> Seven forty two. I'll be out with that other subject be North Service Road five forty eight. How's it going? Are you doing okay, sir? You're just not gonna answer? We're getting reports that your signs have profanity. Can I check them to make sure that they don't? And then I'll, you can stand here all day long if you want to. Uh, no, clear. He is going to do the vaccine. Apparently, his situation went on stop. You're not going to speak? Got the weekend staying in permission. Come for us, please. You're 742. 711, go ahead and head over here. You won't let me look at your signs just to make sure there's not any profanity on them? No, of course not. Do what? No, no, no. If you are if you are holding up signs for the public to see that have profanity, then yes, you are doing something illegal. Cohen versus California 1971, a California statute prohibiting the display of offensive messages violated freedom of expression. If the Roy City Police Department has a statute that says that displaying offensive messages is illegal, then their statute is illegal. I'm just trying to make sure that you, all I want to do is make sure that what I've been told is not what's on your signs, and then you can stand here all day, like I said. And I've already heard you say a cuss word once, so... What are your other signs say, sir? Sir, what are your other signs say? Thank you. 
Yes, yes, it's just it is. Just only conduct. Now you're feeling the ID. I don't have Put your hands behind your back. Supervisor is the one that's right here talking to you. So I'd like to speak to his supervisor. As far as I understand, I have not committed a crime today. When when we're here answering a complaint and you and you refuse to identify yourself, that is a crime. Texas Penal Code 38.02, failure to identify. A person commits an offense if he intentionally refuses to give his name, residence, address, or date of birth to a peace officer who has lawfully arrested the person and requested the information. When, when we're here answering a complaint and you and you refuse to identify yourself, that is a crime. When you're displaying these signs and people are calling because it's offensive to them, that is another crime. Here's a few audio excerpts from Cohen versus California where the Supreme Court ruled that offensive speech is protected speech. What this young man did was to walk through a courthouse corridor in Los Angeles County on his way to a courtroom where he had some business. While walking through that corridor, he was wearing a jacket upon which were inscribed the words, Pup the Draft. Also were inscribed the words, Stop War and several peace symbols. When he entered the courtroom, he took off his jacket and held it folded. When he left the courtroom, he was arrested for disturbing the peace, specifically engaging in tumultuous and offensive conduct. In this respect, it's no different, is it, from what it would be if he'd been picked up out on the street in front of the building or in any other public place? Exactly, Mr. So Chief Justice. I think that's precise. Court. I think it's important at the outset to point out to the court that there was no violence, no component of violence present. Pointing out, as it does, as it can do, depending upon this, upon this court's decision, the very vital distinction between dissent, which may be offensive to people, some people may not like it, but non-violent dissent, it is terribly important, we submit, Your Honors, that this court make clear that distinction, that dissent by its very nature involves the right to be offensive. If non-offensive dissent is almost a contradiction in terms, because if it's non-offensive, it means you agree with it. When you're displaying these signs and people are calling because it's offensive to them, that is another crime. So yes, you have committed a crime. You've committed two. You didn't warn me. We don't have to warn you. Ignor ignorance of the law. His partner never let him finish, but I'm going to take a wild guess and say that he was about to say that ignorance of the law is no excuse. So now that I've shown you that these individuals, Keith Short, Jay Clark, and Michael Burke, are ignorant of the law, I'm sure you're curious what these men will have to do to make restitution to the individual that they harmed through either their ignorance or their maliciousness. I'll give you a hint. It starts with a nothing and it ends with a nothing. I asked you quietly to see your signs and you said, oh, no. consent to any searches or seizures of my property okay. or my person. Yeah, they're not actually, I'm not going to fit We're not going to have the court right here. No. Is that your cell phone and tripod? If it's not, I'm going to leave it sitting here. If it is, I'm going to take it and put it up so somebody doesn't steal it. But if you want to act this way, I'll leave it sitting here and let somebody steal it. Why would you do that? Okay. We don't know who stuff that is. Yep. Okay. I have a question. What am I being arrested for? Disorderly yeah, conduct. Disorderly conduct and failed ID. That's question. You had off the time to ask things right. You know what? Don't nobody, even. nobody even asked me to identify. They already did it. That's if I had ID. I I'm don't know. Let me explain something to you, young man. We're not holding court on the side of the road with you, okay? Well, you're arresting me. We're not holding court with you on the side of the road. Any questions you have, you can ask the jail or you can ask the court. You gonna get up? I can't. Okay. Roll back over and I'll help you up. I'm not sure if I can do that either. 
I would like to see your supervisor right now before you assault me any further. We're not. I am being assaulted. I have not committed a crime. I have not committed a crime. Get up. I have not committed a crime. I can't get up. You're hurting right. me. You're hurting me. Then get up. I cannot get then up. Get up. I can't get up. up like this. Then lift you up. I'm oh, trying to get up. That please get up. Well, assist me up instead we're, of trying to. We're lift trying to help you up. Lift you up. Yes, you are. I've seen the game before. Roll up to your knees and they will assist you up. Roll up to my there knees. I'm a fat they ass. Will. Help me to my knees. We we already have one. Well, All over when you want. Now they'll lift you straight up. Stand up. Okay, help me up. I have committed no crime! I have committed no crime whatsoever! Please, please get my equipment! That's not true, remember I have to kill your equipment. So, you're gonna leave my shit on the side get of the road! The get my car. equipment! Get my equipment! Don't tell me what to do! These events and this arrest happened a couple of months ago. Justin Pulliam spent a ton of time and effort ripping these records, this dash cam footage, and, and all of the uh, probable cause affidavits, all of this information was not just willingly given up by the Royce City Police Department. Now, I wasn't really surprised that these officers would be stupid enough to arrest somebody for protected free speech on a public right-of-way. That wasn't all that surprising to me. But I asked Justin, how the hell did a magistrate sign off on the probable cause affidavit. Because the cops may be ignorant of this, but the magistrate knows that this is unlawful, that this was an unlawful arrest, and that this was a blatant viola violation of Otto's First Amendment rights. So he sent me the probable cause affidavit here, and you can go ahead and pause and read through it. I'm not gonna do that right now. But if you look at the bottom, there's no signature on the magistrate. It, it appears that they have redacted the criminal human being who has been told that he is more than human because he is in the position of magistrate. It appears that they've redacted his name. The human being who signed this is Mark Russo. Mark Russo knew that there was no probable cause to arrest somebody for exercising free speech on a public right of way. Mark Russo knew that what these officers did was not just wrong, was not just illegal, was a violation, a blatant violation of Otto the Watchdog's First Amendment right to free speech and expression. He signed it anyway. A judicial complaint has already been filed, which is very similar to a um, officer complaint when you complain to police about other police, they do an internal investigation. The judicial complaint was filed, other judges, <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm serious, that's how it works. <laughs> His colleagues, Mark Russo's colleagues, um, looked over it and, and said that, uh, and determined that Mark Russo had done nothing wrong by knowingly signing a probable cause affidavit that had no probable cause. But the events you've seen so far aren't even the worst part. The day before Otto was supposed to show up in court for these charges, he was camping nearby the courthouse with his two children. It's been told to me that the police were called because someone reported that they were playing with laser pointers out in the field. They showed up and pointed guns at Otto and his children, and then arrested Otto for felony child endangerment for camping without running water and electricity. Ha <laughs> 
Well, here, hang on one sec. When we figure out 